Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Dave, season two, episode two, Antsy. This is the episode that I'm going to be breaking down, spoiling, talking about in this episode. So if you are not a fan of the show, Dave, on FX, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I recommend it. But if you don't want that to be spoiled, move on to tomorrow's episode or go watch the episode of Dave first. Or maybe if you want to experience the episode through me, you want to listen to how I've digested the episode and processed the episode and now delivering that to you uh, in replacement of the actual episode, feel free, welcome, let's get it started. Uh, in the last episode, Dave was, was in Korea. We find out that Dave has zero songs prepared for his album uh, that he is now signed to uh, create with a label. Uh, and we open this episode with a little montage of Dave trying to record, clearly having writer's block. You have Dave trying to come up with something, but also distracting himself uh, with his equipment, tri- fiddling with equipment. You have him, you know, taking breaks to smoke weed, which he himself has has been kind of particular of when he smokes and when he doesn't smoke. Uh, you also see uh, clearly some sex toys involved. So he's got a lot of distractions going on, which for anybody that's ever tried to do anything or you have that moment of writer's block, distractions come so effortless when you're trying to do something. Let's say you got a deadline, which Dave doesn't have a deadline yet, but let's say you do. You're going to, and you're the procrastination type, you're going to find all of the reasons to be distracted from doing the things you're going to do. Or if it's something that you really want to do, but you're like, you're overthinking it, you're putting too much baggage on top of this thing. Like Dave wants to create the greatest piece of art ever created in rap form. That is like, it's all or nothing. Either he's going to blow people's minds or nothing at all. And when you have that kind of mentality, when you're trying to hit that kind of mark uh, with your art, it is so easy to find other things to do. Uh, Because that's such a, that's, you're thinking of like a million steps in a hike all at once instead of just trying to start walking. Like he's trying to accomplish a long journey in a short amount of time and uh instead of getting started on that journey he's distracting himself from even getting started uh but we do find out while he's fidgeting and 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 not recording distracting himself he discovers that there's ants everywhere so he storms out of his studio and that's where we find out that dave is now in a mansion now season two of dave was filmed during the pandemic so you can understand the production of this season is probably going to be different there's probably not going to be a lot of scenes with a lot of people in them so it kind of makes sense in some ways that he would have this mansion to kind of keep himself to just keep the crew and everybody it's just kind of a location they can film at Uh, but he's in a mansion And he goes to complain to Mike, who is also there, uh, complaining about the ants, complaining about, uh, you know, wanting to bring this up to the label. And you find out that the label person is the reason why they have this mansion, that they were given this mansion for Dave to get away from distractions so he can focus on making this album. And Dave is just finding ants aren't the problem i mean they do have an ant problem they you see a lot of ants in this episode but ants aren't the problem dave distracting himself is 100 percent the problem so much so that dave has spent we find out over 1900 dollars on sex paraphernalia we saw the robot you know uh the uh the fleshlight the robot version of the fleshlight you know you're seeing vr you have Gata strapped on the VR headset about to watch some porn, right? So there's a lot of, a lot of money has been spent on sex paraphernalia. 
and you know d- Dave's trying to help Gata out get get started with this VR porn, which is kind of weird to be watching porn around other people. In general, I mean, obviously for Gata, he is immersed in this VR, you know, reality. So he's not seeing the fact that Dave and, and Mike are, are in the room with him. He knows they're there. He hears them. But he doesn't seem to care. I would want to do that in private for me personally, but I'm not Gata. No, very, very few humans are actually anywhere near the level of stature as Gata. Uh, and Mike realizes that. Mike realizes how special Gata is. And Mike makes sure to let Gata know that he is loved, which I appreciate. Also, Gata, you want to talk about the amount of stress that's given to Mike in his new reality. You have Dave, who is complaining about everything and being the most difficult person on in every step of this journey so far to Mike. Like, the biggest headache for Mike. But, you know, Mike is, that's what happens when you're, you know, you work for somebody where you get a percentage of what they make is you have to deal with. I mean, that's the, that's what happens when you work for anybody. You know, Mike is the representative of all of the workers in the world that you're treated like garbage by their managers, by their bosses. Uh, and and those people are personified in Dave. Uh, but while Gata is like just happy to be there. You know, Gata is just the most positive person, and Mike can appreciate, and Mike, Mike loves Gata. Uh, so Dave steps out, right, to try and just like, okay, Mike's not going to do anything. Let me, let me call up my buddy Els, because he had that amp problem in La Brea. So he gives Els a call, finds out that Els is actually back in L.A. He's no longer on tour with Trippy Red. He's back home. He's having a little get-together that... Els mentions to to Dave and Dave a little offended as he is like in this season it's very hard to like Dave Dave is not a likable character he's very the first episode nothing but stress in this episode Dave is just being a jerk to everybody being like a prima donna he hasn't done anything yet and he's acting like he's a, a, a massive success right not the not the most not the person you want to be around Uh, And you further see that when he gives Els attitude, uh, you know, making assumptions that Els wasn't going to invite him. The only reason Els is going is inviting Dave now is because Dave gave him a call and found out that he was back in L.A. Els didn't bother when Els returned to L.A. He didn't bother to to contact his 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 friend Dave. How dare you, Els? Dave has been in his mansion just pining over the day you return. But Els is having this party, and Dave, still stuck on his old relationship, asking Els if Allie's going to be there. Because he kind of. So Dave is like. Dave's mental. And I've been there. I've been in Dave's shoes. I've been that asshole. I've been that asshole who's hung up on an ex. I have moments where I'm still that asshole, still hung up on that ex. That one that got away, right? Dave, a little bit more active in, in trying to maybe get have that person stay in his life, asking if Allie's going to be at this party. Els doesn't know. She, I think at this point she knows that there's a party, but he doesn't know. Like nobody around Dave is as interested about Allie and Dave as Dave is. So cut to Dave and Mike are now walking through the label, the lobby of the label, through the offices. They have a meeting with their label, one of the executives that's like handling their stuff. And of course, Dave immediately, right out the gate, complaining about the ants, making it all about the ants, about how difficult his life is, about how difficult like the fact that the reality around him is keeping him from writing this album right using the ants as a as an excuse to complain about something 
And now a quick word from our sponsor. Now you can wear the many faces. Original art by Ray Taylor. Select pieces from the ongoing series of abstract ink paintings. All products made with high quality materials made right here in the USA. Go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch to browse the entire collection and save yourself an extra 10% when you check out by using coupon code RTS. TMF. So once again, go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch and save 10% when you use coupon code RTSTMF. And now back to our show, which Mike sees this. Mike just doesn't want to deal with that aspect. It's like, okay, yes, the label's going to take, and they don't, they, they're sympathetic to the issue with the ants. They're going to take care of it. Not a big issue. Call a bug guy, get a can of raid. Right. Not a big issue. But for Dave looking for anything to complain about, anything latching on to anything that's an excuse not to create. And Mike sees that. I mean, earlier he's, he tried sympathizing with them, saying that, you know, he knows it's hard writing an album. But of course, Mike doesn't know. Technically, neither of them know what it's like to create an album. Dave's made music before, but this is his first album. So, on some level, I mean, on both levels, Mike doesn't really know, but neither does Dave. But they're at the label. Ant thing is taken care of. Mike tries to bring up Korea and the fact that Dan is still in Korea, telling him that he talked to the State Department or whatever, and the label doesn't seem to really care. The label doesn't seem to really care. Obviously, Dave doesn't care. Mike seems to be the only one that cares about Dan, their intern that has been uh, that was scooped up by the Korean military to serve his his uh, required military service. So that just kind of gets brushed aside. Like that's the only mention we get of Dan. Right, so it's it's he didn't disappear completely, but uh, he got a little mention in this episode. The label's more concerned with the release date. They want to know when Dave is going to be done, so they can do their promotion. That is what the label is there for. They are the machine that's going to promote this thing. And of course, Dave, being from the ad world, being an ad man, being from marketing, he knows. Or at least, you know, he says he knows, right? He knows basically an aspect, I'm sure. And he's good at marketing enough to know that, like, the somebody suck me thing took off. Like, he, he knows stuff for sure when it comes to marketing. But he's also, like, he's just, like, in a weird place. So they, they want release dates. Dave throws out the idea of releasing it on 9-11 just to make that day mean something different. But, of course, Mike reminds him that, at least in the, the time of this episode, that 9-11 will be, will have, will be the uh, 20th anniversary of the terrorist attack. So uh, probably not the best day. Like, people will be thinking about 9-11 on that day because it's the 20th year anniversary. So Dave realizes that maybe not the best day. Uh, decides maybe April Fool's. And a little concerned that, like, maybe people won't know it's real if he releases it on April Fool's. But the label, you know, assures him that if they click on the thing, they'll know it's real. I mean, that's the thing with April Fool's, which just recently happened and didn't seem to see as many i think the pandemic kind of really shook away a lot of people's appetite for shitty april fool's jokes uh but didn't see a lot of them so anyway they pencil it in april fools is going to be the uh release date of his album which he has not recorded anything for yet uh Maybe he has the uh, the Korea song is the only song because I would imagine if they're doing a video, they have the song um, cut to Emma is now driving Dave. Uh, they picked up some bug spray. There's a little discussion about uh, 
ants having souls, animals having souls, are ants animals, are fish animals? Uh, which, of course, yes, fish are animals. I don't know if insects are technically animals, are they? I would imagine they have a soul, whatever that means, which Dave is concerned because he's about to uh, exterminate in mass a bunch of ants. But the tinier something is, the, the little, the less people care about it. So they have that conversation. They, of course, Dave again, knowing that Emma and Allie are friends, they're roommates. I don't know if they're still roommates, but uh, in the past they were. He asks if Allie knows about the party, Els's party, seeing if she's going to be there. She obviously doesn't, uh, she's not encouraging this encouraging Dave to try and get back in her life in any way. Like, Dave wants to be friends. That's what he says. But I think it's Dave having a hard time with somebody in the world not liking him. And he wants to make sure that Allie still likes him uh, and probably is still wants to be in a relationship with her. For sure. But Emma... Not encouraging. Doesn't want him to see her. And then this biker com comes out of nowhere. Emma almost hits him. Biker yells at her. Calls her like a bitch or whatever. And Emma just gets out of the car and starts booking it. Now, of course, Emma, Asian, probably gets, I mean, one of the most common Asian stereotypes that people that like to call themselves not racist say is that Asians are bad drivers. So probably that fueling Emma a bit. It's like, I am not a bad driver, asshole. You just weren't looking where you were going. She's booking it down the street after this cyclist to, I think, the next intersection. And she, in the saddest, most exhausted way, says fuck you to this bicyclist like she finally like she's she got all of her anger out in the run and by the time she caught up to him she, she, you know she wanted to to tell him fuck you and then she gets back to the car and you know repeats to herself that she's not a bad driver because she has to she has to especially now right especially since the pandemic and you have the the former president the the biggest failure known to america donald trump encouraging violence and hate against Asian. So all of the stereotypes are like free reign for all of the people that don't have a problem with being racist or that think that they're not racist. So I'm sure Emma's part of that frustration comes from the fact that she is now dealing with constant bullshit from people because of her ethnicity. So now cut to Dave is back at home spraying the ants kind of li like little montage a little bit kind of spraying the ants taking his pill that he's for his back acne. Then cut to now he's poolside. At, I think at Benny's place or Benny came over to his place, but he's poolside. Benny's there and there's three girls in the pool and Dave is kind of like holding court. He's making him laugh. He's, you know, entertaining. Dave loves to be entertaining. Dave loves to be funny, and he thinks, you know, he's like, oh, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm, 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 uh, these girls, he, he, he wants the attention. He misses the attention. He misses having the attention from Allie, from his relationship. He no longer has that attention anymore, right? There's nobody, nobody in his life is like looking at everybody, like Mike isn't looking at him like, oh, look, it's Dave. You know, Gaeta isn't, Gaeta at times, but he's still like, he's not like amazed by Dave. You know, Dave's ego is hurting. And these girls are helping because they're attractive and they're laughing and he's entertaining and they love him. Right. But they love him like, oh, you're funny. You're cute, funny, awkward guy. I love you, but not like I'm attracted to you. And one of the girls even goes so far to prank Dave to say that one of the girls like, hey, you know, that you, you, 
hook up with that that girl if you really want to. She really likes you. And Dave's like, really? Really? You mean a uh, attractive girl's going to like me? No, just kidding. Just kidding. You're Dave. You're awkward and ugly and not successful yet. Maybe if you had more money, they would. So mean. Of course, Dave embarrassed. Who wouldn't be embarrassed? Like, called out in front of that person, too. Like, hey, hey, Sheila, can you believe Dave actually thought you were attracted to him? Ha, <laughs> Dave. I love you, Dave, but no way. Like, oh, thanks. Just take the knife out of my heart, you bitch. Poolside of Betty's. Of course, there's a movie that they all want, that Benny and, and the, the women want to go see, so they end up leaving. That's when the whole punking of Dave's emotions happens. They're off to a movie. Now cut back to Dave at home by himself listening to the track from the last episode of last season. The track with Allie. Just just the musical part of it. Not not what he recorded with her. But just the music of it. And it's like you know, it's it's when you break up with somebody, you have that song, right? You have the song or an album or many songs that take you back to a happy time where you were together, right? And you revisit it because you like to punish yourself and make yourself cry that it's no longer part of your life. I have it. Temper trap. Okay, sweet disposition. Like... I could cry if I listened to that because it takes me back to a point where it's like, eh, damn it. Damn it. And that's what Dave is doing. He's listening to that track. It's a track that not only he had that connection with Allie, but it's a track that he re-listened to after they broke up back in his car. He was listening to it, and you could see that it was like a track that was kind of inspiring him on some level. So now cut to Gaeta and Dave are walking to Els' party, smoking and sharing a, a blunt on their way there. Dave walking in. They walk into this party. Of course, Dave is talking shit anyway. And he sees a dude posted up against a wall on his phone. And Dave assumes that that guy is taking a picture of him. And kind of confronts him. It's like, oh, you could at least ask. And the guy's like, well, what are you talking about? I'm just on my phone, ego. Ego much? Needs some attention, superstar? Clearly, Dave starved for attention. Sees Els back in the corner of the restaurant. Goes over, or wherever they're at. Goes over to, to see his buddy Els. And, of course, Els is in the middle of a story. He's telling to a holding court, telling this story. Big, grand gestures, like, well into the story. And you could see Dave kind of just on the outskirts, just like, oh, why? Like, me? What about me? I'm here. I'm the superstar. Why doesn't everybody just notice that Dave is here now? I've got a, I've got a, I've got a label. I'm signed. Why isn't everybody just, like, Surprised and happy that I came. Tries to interrupt Els. Doesn't really work. Els a little bit irritated with Dave trying to be the center of attention. Join Inspired Disorder Plus today. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. Membership includes members only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor show completely ad free as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspire Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus, 
and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. Cut to Dave sees Emma walk in and assumes that Allie is right behind her, that she showed up with Emma. So Dave is like, okay, bye, Els. And he just, or I think he said bye to, to Gata and uh, runs onto the dance floor just instantly acting like he's having a good time. Like have, having the most miserable time up until he thinks Allie walks in and he runs onto the stage just like no care in the world pretending like he's having the best time come to find out Allie didn't show up it was just emma we find out uh that uh obviously they're seeing the fact that dave is having this issue with Allie not being like he's had this thing with Allie. and gata mentions that it's like listen why don't you just be like els and emma they smashed and they didn't let it get between them so Dave finds out now that uh, that that episode from last season where Els and Emma hooked up uh, turns out was just a very awkward situation and didn't go anywhere. I think obviously because in that episode we saw that like, you know, they were clearly on different wavelengths in that episode. She wasn't very into it. He was like super emo it just didn't work out well for them and and they weren't in a real relationship which emma reminds dave it's like it didn't work out with els and it's easy to be around els because it was just one moment it was like a small blip an accidental blip where dave had a legitimate relationship with ali for a su substantial amount of time so it's a far different comparison it is not a very equal, they're not on equal playing fields, those, that comparison. But at least Dave found out about, about their smashing. And it's surprising it took this long. So then Dave ends up going to the restroom. Els follows him in to go pee together. Els telling Dave to use the, the toilet because he knows that he loves to sit down anyway to pee because of his uh, hypophase, hypospadias. So they're kind of catching up, also kind of talking shit, because Els, Els is, like, farther in his career. He, like, surpassed Dave, because Dave hasn't actually written anything for his album. Meanwhile, Els has already been on tour. He's working with, I mean, they're in different kind of categories, but still Els is a little bit farther and kind of treating Dave a little bit like shit or at least giving it back to Dave. He's not going to let Dave talk shit to him and be an asshole. You also see Els take a little bump. Of course, Dave being like, oh, well, just I'm a good friend because I won't let everybody know that you just did cocaine in the bathroom until he leaves and he like strides to you. Like Dave is very petty, very petty. And uh, Els is kind of just over it. But they get to catch up a little bit. So now Dave goes outside because he's just like, he's not getting any, any of the... Ten like, nothing that he wants to happen is happening. Nobody is recognizing him. Nobody is gives a shit that he's there. Like, he is, he is like the least... He's, and he's just having a miserable time. So he goes outside to smoke some more of that blunt... And he sees a crowd of people down the street and decides to go over there to get some attention. Because that's what he's been craving this entire episode. Not getting it from the, the cute girls in the pool. I mean, he was getting attention, but not, not the kind of attention he wants. He wants, like, love. Dave is missing love which he is no longer getting because he's no longer with Ali. So he goes into this crowd, immediately gets recognized uh, by a girl that just kind of recognize, recognizes him as a rapper. So, like, the, the least, least amount of a fan, like, more of a star fucker than anything. Like, just somebody that is, is excited to have sex with somebody that's famous. So he takes her back to the mansion obviously gives her like the tour she makes sure to remind him is like remember 
I'm going to want a picture later because I got to prove to my friends and my social media followers that I actually hooked up with a rapper and I'll listen to your music later, I guess. But he takes her on a tour. They end up in his studio. And then you see Dave using like auto tune as a move right as a as like a way to get things rolling and it's the same track that he did with Ali he's trying to recreate that moment from last season where he got Ali to auto tune with him in this beautiful way to make this track and he's trying to recreate that moment trying to recreate that feeling with this random star fucker. And of course, she's not playing into it. She is she's kind of dim. She's not a smart person. She's dumb. She's obviously just into Dave because he's a a rapper. Like she does not has no idea who he is at all. As a person, as a rapper, she just knows that he's famous and that's all she cares about. And it's not, it's not working. His recreations are not working. And then it gets to a point where she's like, oh, she whispers to him. It's like, so is it true about your weird dick? Because I'd like to see it. Right? Like her, her move is to bring up the most sensitive aspect of Dave. The thing that like is despite the fact that he's opened up about it you know he went on the breakfast breakfast club and talked about it talked about it pretty openly but you could see that it was a difficult subject for him to bring up and now this chick is just like oh he's you're a human oddity i want to go fuck the human oddity so it makes the selfie that we take together an even better story for my my followers on instagram i fucked an oddity he's got a weird dick it wasn't any good. Actually, it didn't even matter. I could barely feel it. I was so wasted. So she throws this line of like, I want to see your weird dick. Let's let's get it. Let's do it. And Dave's like, nah, peace. Just uh, make sure you buckle up in your lift because lift drivers are just drivers. You're not like magically protected because you're paying for the trip. And then you see Dave go up to his to his room or whatever, gets the auto blow, which is the name of his sex toy that Benny was talking about in the in the pool. It's the, the sex toy that you saw early on in the episode where the montage of Dave fidgeting around, being distracted from recording. His auto blow machine, you see Dave pick it up, you see him squirt the lube into the the silicone mouth right you see him strap on the vr which is kind of a setup i've tried those auto blow machines not that specific brand but i've tried those they're not that good but i haven't tried it with vr maybe both together is an experience but he's got the whole experience he's paid over nineteen hundred dollars for these accoutrements to be a single person. He sets up the most perfect situation to have a sexual relationship without being in a relationship. Just sex toys and porn. And then as he's using it, you see all of these ants crawling all over the auto blow. He's got the VR, so he can't see anything. He's got the, the auto blow on his dick, his weird dick. You know, he's not getting any judgment from the auto blow. But you're seeing all these ants all over the place. And eventually, you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. Because you see all the, they're everywhere. It's antsy in this episode. And of course, they start attacking his, his junk. And I'm sure, you know, you think about it, you're an ant. You're crawling on this thing, and then all of a sudden, you're stuck in this like lubricant that is covering this this person and it's like you're just an ant trying to survive 
and you're trying to bite and claw your way out of this like molasses of astroglide. So the ants bite it, bite it, uh, bite it, Dave. And Dave, you know, stands up in pain, still strapped to his VR, trips over some stuff, f- crashes through the window, the sliding glass door, and falls over the railing of the mansion. Dave's dad shows over. Dave just died masturbating. The rest of the, the episodes of Dave are filled in by other people. His Dave is dead. Cut back to moments later, just after the star fucker talking, using her line about Dave's weird dick. And Dave makes a different choice. There's an alternate ending to this episode where Dave decides to just sleep with this person. Like, just do it. Just to, like, hopefully cleanse his palate and try and get away from constantly thinking about Allie. Trying to recreate the magic that he had with Allie using this just rando that he picked up off the street. And as a way to survive. Because that was the chain of events he thought was going to happen. Aside from maybe the ants biting his dick and him falling over, that was the creative creativity that Dave possesses within his brain of like the steps that will probably happen after he starts using this this thing, knowing the ants are everywhere. So he ends up he says yes and he ends up having sex with her. And that's how the episode ends. Kind of interesting. Interesting look at where Dave's at mentally. Just huge ego thinks everybody is all about him all the time meanwhile he is so broken over losing Allie wanting to recreate the magic with Allie looking to like literally recreating a musical track that he had with Allie trying to recreate that with somebody else trying to almost erase the fact that she was part of his life so I enjoy it still you know kind of a bummer still Not as funny, funnier than last episode. Episode one was very stress inducing, you know, where this one a little bit, a little bit funnier. I mean, now we're seeing now. I mean, it's back to like the show. It's not they're not in Korea. This Dan guy is clearly gone forever. But uh, yeah, that was it. Season two, episode two, Antsy of Dave. Next week, episode three is titled The Observer. Ooh. We'll see what that happens. What happens in that that, see what happens in that episode next week. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, make sure you uh, keep it classy. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com and follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.